Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, and a couple years ago, I worked on this MIDI fighter project. Uh, it's Arduino-based. It was one of the first electronics projects I really did, like seriously, with soldering and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I kind of want to talk about, you know, what I still like about it, what I would do differently now. Does it still work? Test it with the synths, and then future plans for this kind of project concept. But first, with the pandemic, people are really struggling right now. If you're one of the lucky ones, consider donating items, money, or food to your community's food banks, shelters, or other local programs. If you aren't sure where to start, resources will be down in the description. So first up, and just looking at this project, I keep it on display on shelf I have back there because I am very proud of it, uh, even with stuff I would do differently today. Mainly because it was the first time I really like got into writing code for Arduino to do something MIDI based, uh, which when I first even attempted to get into electronics was the plan all along. I wanted to do music tech stuff because at the time I was still in school. So to realize that um, was really fan like fantastic and a real game changer for me. I also remember it, it took me like a month to code this thing and build it. It was a huge learning curve to try to get the code working. Uh, I really hadn't done that at that point. Um, and it, it was just really huge. So looking back just on that, how I've grown and how I can code up projects fairly quickly now, like that, that's really huge to kind of look back on. And I kind of, if anyone watches these videos that maybe is brand new to coding and still finds it like really intimidating, I mean, I'm not an expert coder by any means, but it, as far as like, you know, hardware projects, like it, it, the growth is definitely like in time, once you do enough projects, like you will, you will get the hang of it. Um, just just kind of keep at it. I never had coding in school or anything like that. Um, it was something that I totally learned by reading and watching documentation online after I was out of college. So like you, it's, it's definitely possible. I still really love the aesthetic that I went with that you can see the guts. I, I love the guts of electronics, so I do so many teardowns. And I love the, the wood aesthetic too. I like mixing um, more organic materials like that uh, with um, electronics. And another thing, I didn't have a 3D printer yet. I hadn't done any of that when I did this project. So this was really kind of the only option I had uh, to do something that looked really finished. I also did a lot of projects at that time that involved like cutting up like boxes or plastic pencil cases, things like that uh, for housing. And it was because I kind of got sick of that that I finally like jumped on the 3D printing train and went that route. Some of my more favorite enclosures though have still been with more organic materials um, and not necessarily 3D printed. So that's something I would like to do maybe a little bit more of in the future. I really love these arcade buttons. Um, the color scheme, although it looks just like primary colors, actually kind of sort of inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey. I love how all the panels in that movie have this really like fun 60s sci-fi aesthetic of like having the black and then like the primary colors kind of interspersed. Um, even the space suits um, have that kind of going on. And so that was a big influence on how I uh, chose the colors for this. One other thing I want to note, it wasn't just like my first like real coding experience. It was also one of my first soldering experiences. I used to be terrified of soldering. It used to freak me out. I really, I always felt like I was either going to burn myself really badly or I was going to fry a component, um, whether it was melting the housing or applying too much heat. Uh, and this was the first project where I really was like, all right, I'm soldering, we're doing it. <laughs> um, and it came out pretty decent. I mean, I can look and see a lot of blobbing happening, like definitely not the best joints, but at the time at least it, it worked and we're going to find out if it, it still does. Before we jump into that though, uh, another thing that I th was definitely due to my fear of soldering. Um, and also the idea of like soldering makes electronics like kind of permanent, right? You have to be able to desolder it to be able to free the components out or fix a mistake. And when you are still currently terrified of soldering, the idea of desoldering is even a bit yikes. Uh, even right now, I, I definitely still struggle with desoldering. That's something I definitely still need to work on when you just walk by. So I use these quick connect um, on the arcade buttons, they plug into JST connectors that are soldered onto 
um, a perma proto board. And I mean, that makes for a really nice, smooth connection, you know? However, uh, and also it makes breadboarding it like really easy because I know like one side it's going, sending signal, the other side's grounded, yada, yada. However, um, it makes the wiring inside really chonky and almost kind of takes away from the fact that you can see inside because it's hiding the more interesting guts, like the wires that are going to the microcontroller, um, the wiring on the breadboard for all the different like lengths of wire, things like that. These buttons do light up though when you press them, which is um, kind of the greatest thing ever. I also want to mention the microcontroller is a SparkFun Pro Micro. And that was the first time I was using an Arduino based board that was not an Arduino Uno. Uh, that was kind of a big step for me to even learn that those existed. Um, and that also, because it's a 32U4, it can go over USB. This is using USB MIDI. Uh, when I had first attempted to do MIDI with Arduino, you still had to like wire up the MIDI circuit and it was like a whole thing and like baud rates and, you know, uh, especially if you have zero background any of that stuff, it was, it was really rough. And that's, I think why I, you know, I played around with it for like a couple months while I was in college and then took a hiatus for like two or three years and then really seriously revisited it um, with this being one of those projects I revisited it with uh, that kind of started me on the journey that I'm on right now with projects. So yeah, this project's really sentimental <laughs> to me too. And I think that's why I keep on display. Um, one thing, the biggest thing I think I would change is I remember the, because I was still kind of new to coding, um, I got it working by the, the MIDI was sent upon the button's release, um, which isn't ideal. So I actually didn't end up using it that much. I used it a little bit just cause it was fun, but you kind of had to have a feel for it. Like, okay, the note's gonna release when I release the button. So you have to kind of anticipate that just kind of how like when you're playing Guitar Hero, you get kind of adjusted to how the controller is sending messages and things like that. But I'm really curious if this still works. Uh, so I'm gonna plug it in so that it's feeding MIDI through the Raspberry Pi um, MIDI pass through to Soul, seeing if we can get some, some sounds out. Okay, so here's the MIDI fighter. Here's a Raspberry Pi. It's going to Soul, which is sending trigger and 1V oct, and also uh, known as like basically what note to play uh, to plates. Uh, and so when I first powered this thing up, I still had uh, example code that I wrote um, that it, it's really not code. It's more to just like send all the pins to high so that all the LEDs are on on this thing. And I used to do, I did that for um, photos and stuff like that. So that was a little bit of a surprise. So I had to go kind of down a rabbit hole um, to my old Hackster page to get to the GitHub code that luckily I'd upload. And that's why it's important to document your projects, folks. Um, and then I had to get the SparkFun Pro Micro board set up in Arduino because I, since I had used that board, I'd done a clean this on my computer. So that board was missing. I mean, it was, it was a rabbit hole. But uh, I uploaded the code and I tested it with the MIDI and it still worked and sure enough, It's working. I did find out. Oh, that button had been short, but now it's now it's working. Using this with a, with a synth, that's new. Uh, I hadn't done that before. I'd only been with like a DAW, so to play it live is really cool. Uh, I'm very into it. Uh, really, a different experience. I mean, I know it's just nonsense now. I'm just playing um, like almost like 12 tone cause I'm just hitting all the buttons. And I'm not like getting an actual melody out, but I'm glad this button came back too. But you can see how it sends note off on release. I really like playing it with the synth. That's fun. And that bodes well for uh, kind of the next plans for kind of the next iteration of this. So this next iteration is going to use, you know, something I just, I don't know if you've heard a lot about it, but there's this new uh, Raspberry Pi microcontroller called the uh, the Pico mm, using the RP2040 chip. Um, I kid, there's been so much coverage, so much talking about it. I almost did a video on it, but like so many uh, people have already done videos. Uh, I, I, if anything, I'd like to do a video about using CircuitPython with it, with the, uh, PIO stuff, that assembly things. Uh, so I'm working on like kind of understanding that a little better um, and maybe I'll do a video uh, from that perspective. But otherwise there's there's so many videos. <laughs> so a lot from people that actually developed it. So I, I figure why why add to that when there's like 
people more qualified to talk about it. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to be using this. Why? Uh, well, first of all, it runs CircuitPython, which is my programming uh, language of choice these days. Um, has all the I.O. So getting 16 buttons. Whoops. On here, I kind of forgot it was still attached to the synth. Um, it will be no problem, plus more. What is more? What more could you want? Well, I don't like to just recreate stuff necessarily. Like, I like to kind of expand a little. So that's why the plan is, and I've been prototyping this on a Metro M4 um, before the Pico came out, uh, where it has a, a menu. And you can kind of see on the screen how it has the 16 by 16. And you see these numbers in the center of the buttons. Um, those are MIDI numbers. Uh, so the idea is you use, this is a rotary encoder, but rotary IO is actually not available yet on the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's totally okay. Um, there are these like five way selector, like joysticks that are literally small. So we're gonna use that instead. Uh, and there's enough pins, which is, which is great. That's why so many of the pins so great, but you can at least see the demo here. So like basically you would select what button and probably a mistake to do this on top of buttons, but here we go. Um, and then you can select that button. Now we have a new display with a circle and a number, and now I'm going to adjust that number. Now it says 75. So the idea is you can change what MIDI note number is associated on the fly uh, with each button, which is pretty, I think, awesome. Like what if you're playing along and you're like, you know what, I want, I don't want middle C, I want a lower C. In fact, I want all the C's. You can adjust it on the fly. Or if you're doing drumming, uh, you can adjust it so that it's a different kit or whatever. So that's the idea. It's gonna use the Pico with uh, CircuitPython, USB MIDI, and it's gonna have this fun UI that you can interact with to change the MIDI notes on the fly. Uh, and I'm gonna be working on that next couple of weeks. It is a collab with Nairuez. He's gonna be doing the case, um, and everything. So it's also gonna be an Adafruit Learn Guide which is great because um, I love documentation, um, especially, uh, I mean, my my own documentation on Hackster saved me in like res resurrecting this project from the dead. Uh, so I'm excited to do a new version. Um, it will have arcade buttons, of course. Um, it's gonna be a 3D printed enclosure um, and just to kind of have this new um, instrument uh, that I'm working on that's going to be this evolution of this this first one here that's so near and dear to my heart. If you can be sentimental about a wooden box, um, I am in this case. And for me, at least, I see it as a nice companion piece to the melody, MIDI Melody Maker that Nay and I worked on. Um, I think those two side by side will be uh, great friends, especially with, with synths. So that's going to do it for this video. I just kind of wanted to revisit the sentimental project I have, um, talk about, you know, how I feel about now, kind of what it means to me. Does it still work? It does. And, you know, what's coming in the future. It's also crazy how far, like, microcontroller projects for, for a hobbyist perspective, like, have come uh, since I made this. Like, I don't think CircuitPython was really a thing yet. I think it like maybe just started. I know I hadn't played with it yet. Um, and I've been playing with it since, um, I think CircuitPython 2. Also like uh, from my own perspective, my own skills have really just grown so much. When I built this thing, there's no way I could have thought of like having coding a, a graphic display and having it be interacting and stuff like that would have like blown my mind. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess maybe the, the moral of this video is like, uh, keep at it. Even if you don't have like a background um, in this, y you can you can learn and uh, you can do it. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this video. I'll have a link down to the Hackster video and like maybe if I'm feeling adventurous, I'll link the old videos too for this, but like, please be kind because they were, they're really old now. And I, I think I've gotten a little bit better on camera. But thank you for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next iteration of this and also more music projects. I've really only done music projects so far this year um, that may continue to be the trend. But yeah, uh, stay safe out there. And until next time, this one Blitz City DIY.